Hello, this is Dr. Basil Considine from the ACU Online Writing Center, and today we're going to be talking about how to write about structure and responsibilities within an organization. Now, since the assignment that we're talking about it happens to be relatively deep in a course and in the program in which the course is embedded, we're going to not be looking at a slide deck today. We're going to be looking at two things, about the assignment description and at a copy of our course paper template to explore how to take these instructions and begin realizing them in sentences and paragraphs that do the things that the assignment asks you to do. Now the sample assignment that we are looking at is drawn from the Health Services Administration and Leadership course, HCAD 624, and we are looking at the week 4 assignment, the Organizational Structure and Relationships assignment. And if we look at the tasks that are laid out here, we see that there are some discrete pieces of information that need to be reported. Uh, first, to locate yourself on your organization's org chart. Alright, so we're going to need to have an org chart and going to show where that is, uh, preferably both visually and in the prose. We need to describe the reporting relationships, which again will be more clear with that chart, and how your position relates to vision and mission. Is your position a line or staff position? Okay, that, that will be fairly easy to state, and then you'll want to back it up with a couple sentences explaining how your position falls into that, you know, what are the things that make you classify it that way. Uh, describe the strengths of the organizational structure as well as the opportunities. And let's say the that can mean both the opportunities for you professionally and the opportunities for improvement. Uh, determine your matrix reporting relationships and the way you interface with them. Analyze the informal relationships that you have and how the effective utilization of them are an advantage to you. And support your points with the concepts of organizational theory. Now the rest is saying, okay, APA style, have at least three references, and include a copy of the org chart, but don't include other people's names. So describe their positions, but don't include names for anyone besides yourself. And so let's start with that task of creating an org chart. So you can do this in Microsoft Word with built-in tools. There are other software that you can use, but let's use Word because it's ready. So I'm going to go grab a copy of our APA course paper template. So I've pulled up a copy of our bank APA course paper template, and the first thing we want to do is figure out how we're going to create the organizational chart. Now you could always draw it and scan it, or draw it, take a picture, and embed that in here. But we can do something that is both a little bit more uh, professional looking, and also something that can be adjusted more easily using the Smart Art tool here. So the Smart Art is used to create graphics that you can dynamically adjust. And there are a number of different options here. And we've gone to the Insert tab on the ribbon. So if you start Home, next one over is Insert, and then Smart Art. And you can see that it will give you an idea of what these things will look like based on these graphics that show up. So we're going to start with Hierarchy. There are other things you can use for a flowchart, but Hierarchy is a pretty good way of showing this. And there are also ways that you can label it for some of these. So we're going to go ahead and take this one here. Uh, again, not the only one, but convenient for showing lines of reporting. So in this case, I'm going to start by doing up my org chart when I worked at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. So at the top of most organizational charts for a university, there'll be the university president. Now, one of the virtues of using this tool versus, say, doing it in Photoshop is that it's automatically adjusting the size, as you can see here. I just type things in, and if it gets too large, it'll adjust the size. So in this case, uh, let's uh, start with me down here, and I'll show you some of the features along the way. And we'll say... And I'll go ahead and I will bold my name there. And you can see Basil Constantine, visiting assistant professor. All right, so I go in here and I put in a Dean University Library. And I look at this and say, oh, um, actually, I, I left out a step. And so now let, 
how will I include that? Well, if you look at this smart art text bar on the side, on the left hand side of the screen, you can see that it's representing this as a set of bullets. So I can go ahead and take this and uh, move it down and then indent it. So now we have another level in the, the middle. So I can put here writing center director. So there can be other people at my level. So I can go ahead and uh, I had a colleague who was the administrative assistant. And keep in mind, this is an org chart. We're not saying what seniority is or something like that. We're showing how people are reporting. So I, I need to get them down here. And so I need to get them aligned in this list at the same level under writing center director. So I'll just use this arrow here to indent, or as it says here, to devote. <laughs> and now we have my colleague. And I could even add here, uh, we had, uh, what was it? Something like 15 work studies employees. And they're not reporting to the dean of the library directly. They're reporting to the writing center director. So now we have that. And I could, if it was relevant, include other levels of detail. But usually for something like this, you're giving the line of report. And unless there's some uh, dual reporting thing, then you might uh, not have this at all. Now, suppose you, you have more than one report. And this sometimes is called as, you know, are you a direct report? Are you an indirect report? In my case, there were three people I met with. I met with the writing center director. I met with the dean of the university library. And I met with the dean of, uh, with the uh, uh, associate dean for the uh, graduate school of arts and sciences. So I'm going to go ahead and add, add another level here. Whoops, that's not where I wanted to go. So here's what I did. I accidentally started typing into this label here. What I want to do is go up here and use the plus to add another level. And it'll occur at whatever level you have selected here. So in this case, I'm going to add the Dean Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. And I'm going to add underneath them the Associate Dean And I need to have this person under that, so I'll use the indent or demote tool here and put them under that. And then I am going to, to have myself represented there as well. So I'll add a, a bullet. I'll demote myself to put myself there. And then I can paste that. Now, just to make it clear that this is me in more than one spot, I could go ahead and I could use colors here. And I will, you know, I'll go ahead and I'll put myself in this uh, dark purple. So I stand out on the chart. And I'll do that for my other representation here. And think, oh, hold on. Um, I also report to the library dean. So uh, let me go ahead and add another. So this is one way of representing it. Now you could also create a chart where every line leads just to one entry. And for that, I would say that there are other tools here uh, under SmartArt, different uh, relationship things that might show that a little bit better. So for example, you might use one of these charts where everything concludes, it's everything leads to one person. Or you might have this converging radial, for example. Let's go ahead and do one of those just as an example. So I'm going to create smart art and we're going to use the converging radial here. And so we'll put myself here. And we'll have writing center director. 
and then we can add another level and have the din now this is something where this isn't quite showing what we want because it's making these sub things so you might look at this and say hold on i want to try one of these other designs here and so you can actually swap between these different things using this menu here and see does this represent what you're looking for and actually this this does show a bit more now it makes me look like the center of the universe so you might not want to take this org chart to your boss as <laughs> like oh, i'm the the big cheese as it were but for showing that there are multiple relationships it certainly does that and so one of the things that i always recommend people do is ask what is the purpose of this chart and in this case if if i wanted to show competing responsibilities or competing reporting uh, it does show that a bit now there there's some things where because the writing center director is also in line reporting to the dean of the university library you might want to show that as well and so there again you can pick some different options here and just note here you can switch between some uh, very specific things and you might decide that you want to jump backwards and say go to uh, this style here now this is showing me at the top so you probably want to invert that but that's easy enough to change if I wanted to change that I could just go ahead whoops that was delete I can go ahead and I can use the reverse indentation and move people up or down move it around so we have let's say me here and then some people will for and once this is more finalized they'll go ahead and they'll just draw in using these shapes here an additional arrow showing the second line of report whatever it happens to be now in this case probably uh, I'll look at this and say well hold on that was supposed to be under someone else the I report to the dean of the library the associate dean reports to the graduate arts and sciences whoops I messed that up so I just adjust it and move that and you can see I can do all this without having to retype anything which is a very handy thing and so I might take that arrow here And say okay well here I'm reporting there for example and add another one where oh let, let's say I'm going to place myself under them but I also want to have this line here So by minimizing the number of things that need to be manually retyped or repositioned, this is a very helpful time saver. Now, however you choose to represent this, uh, let's go back to this example here. And we'll say this is chief executive. We'll call this executive one. And then I can go ahead here and... Uh, Look at this and say, all right, rearrange things, and look at how the different labels move around with this. So here, I could even copy this set here. 
So I have this capacity to label different things with blocks of information. So in this case, I'm going to sit, call this uh, call it faculty, admin, and support. And yes, I could move the work studies to another level, but th this is where we're uh, having a lot of contact with people and we'll say this is management here. And if I look at this and say, okay, um, there's another level that we need to have here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add it here. And we'll make this the assistant dean. And I'll say, okay, the writing center director is actually reporting to them directly. And then we can just adjust these ones here to indent them as well. And we'll need to go ahead and uh, add another level here to make our labels match. All right, so we have that hierarchy there. I'm going to go back and I'm going to restore that additional um, line of report here by adding the arts and sciences back in. And myself in there. And so you can see there are these different levels that I ended up at. Now, again, what is the purpose of this? In this case, I'm trying to show how I had different reporting things and different levels of um, responsibilities, which is what this assignment is asking you to do. So let's go back and now look at the question of how will you label this? And APA style has particular rules. So this is a graphic, so we'll call it a figure, and we'll also need to label it. It doesn't need to be very original. Organizational chart or my organizational chart are just fine. What we do need to do is make sure that it's formatted in a particular way. So in this case, uh, we're going to go ahead and we are going to add this tag here, figure table label, and that makes it bold as you can see. We're going to add figure table caption. That'll make it italicized. And that also means that these will stay with this graphic, even if this graphic gets moved to another page. All right, so how would you refer to this in text? Well, this is a good time for us to look back at the um, assignment instructions. So we're going to go ahead and grab these and head over to where our document. So first thing, I'm going to go ahead and have that... Uh, match the destination formatting so we have the right spacing. All right, now on the organization's organizational chart. So how would I refer to that? Well, I've listed myself on multiple levels, so I'm going to say I exist on multiple levels. Executive two, management, faculty, admin, support. Now, you'll be reporting about your own here, but when I write about this, I exist at multiple places or multiple levels on my organization's chart reflecting my diverse responsibilities. Now you can refer to that chart, see figure one. <laughs> and then now that we've identified that's the source of the information, we don't need to um, refer to it in every single sentence. So I exist at multiple levels on my organization's chart, see figure one, reflecting my diverse responsibilities. For example, I report directly to two deans executive level two, executive two is how I called it, so let's be consistent. Called it. Now, if you're wondering, is this common? Uh, less so. In my case, the position was funded by the university library and by the Graduate School of 
arts and sciences, and so what would normally be a maximum of two lines of reporting ended up being three because of that. Hey, it doesn't matter uh, as far as um, your assignment, so long as you're reflecting the your place within the organization accurately. So I've uh, now describe this, I've referred to this, I could elaborate on it, and you certainly will, but now here's the, how you would start referring to yourself. So describe your reporting relationships. I occupy an unusual uh, set of reporting relationships because I have a newly funded position that is jointly funded to university colleges. All right, now, the mission and vision. This is something where you might look at the institutional statement, where you might look at guidelines, or in this case, I'll talk about what I was hired to do, specifically to. Um, So I've listed these. Now you can elaborate on this, the vision and mission. And you know this, this is something where your corporation, your university, your school district may have something that is more symbolic, more inspirational, or more practical. Or your department might have a specific one. I'm reminded of working for an entity at, the, at Boston University where we were set up specifically to solve problems across the university. And so our mission was to find problems and make them go away. <laughs> and that is a mandate that is very different from the larger educational mission of the university. Certainly served that in the end, but it's you can have a local or departmental mission that is apart in some way from the larger organization here. Now, liner staff, this is usually going to be a very simple one to add and say either this is a line position or I categorize my position as a whatever it is. And then the important thing is to give supporting evidence and argumentation. For example, okay, what is it that you do that qualifies as a line position? What is it to you that calls it a staff position, or how or why is the uh, position, uh, why, why is, are the responsibilities blurred? Now this next one, the strengths as well as opportunities, usually people get the strengths pretty quickly. So let's talk about the opportunities. Uh, there is an opportunity for greater efficiency by consolidating reports to the two you know, deans. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I might make an argument for, well, if they just both met with me at the same time all the time, then I could tell them all the same things. Uh, whether that is practical or not, well, that's something you can discuss. Now, in this case, the responsibilities of a the university library dean and the associate dean for arts and sciences uh, I think we're different enough that you would have very different reporting meetings. And, uh, you know, uh, I happen to like going out to lunch to do reporting to the graduate arts and sciences dean. So, you know, you, you may have things where you say, well, actually, we prefer it this way, but it could be done that way. Or it might be, okay, yes, this is possible, but it would require a major reorganization or it would require the money moving around. And I think it, it is fair to say that so long as I was paid by two colleges, they would want me to be reporting to two. And so that is something where you might say, here are these opportunities, here are the costs that would, or the decisions that would need to have, uh, need to be made to make that a practical reality. The matrix reporting relationships, again, that's very simple, similar. You're go you can use I statements here. You can certainly identify opportunities for improvement. This is the initial starting thing, and then you expand from there. Now, the informal relationships that you have, ah, this is something where 
you might look uh, at how are you interfacing with people across your level, how are you working with people in other groups. In my case, uh, I will say that, uh, you know, because I was around, I was in the building, uh, I acted as the second in command for the writing center. And so I supervised those work study students when the writing center director wasn't on site. And that, so if I'm talking about this, okay, um, I had several informal relationships. And you know, let's specify the structure within them. For example, as the nighttime supervisor, So don't just state that. Well, tell us how there's meeting. In this case, that's something I enjoyed. Mm. So I'll put that down. And now the this is where you tie in the reading for the week. So let's take a quick look at that. So just based on the things that we have in my very brief outline so far, you can look at the reading and see here's some areas where it's probably going to be uh, tying together. So I might take the example of supervising work studies and say, okay, that's an example of my boss delegating those duties to me. You know, she certainly didn't want to be there all the hours that the library were open. You know, you need work-life balance and everything. And, and so uh, that's delegation in action. Now, I might also look at this and say, if I'd read this and I chose to use a particular form of organizational chart to reflect the structure type, I might have a brief discussion of that and cite this article. Now, hyper-specialization, yeah, my job was created in part because they didn't have anyone who was doing that specialized role. And it was so specialized that uh, it was prioritized by two different colleges to create, and so they funded it. And so I can absolutely cite the Malone and, and it all article here in support of that. So when you do up your outline, one of the reasons to start doing up your outline first is because it will show you what kinds of resources you might be paying particular attention to as you do the reading or as you revisit it and identify proactively, oh, this source, I can probably use it for this thing. And then you can get your required references taken care of right away. Doesn't mean you can't include more, but you know, we want to start from the point of meeting the assignment responsibilities. Well, that's all the time we have for today. So if you have any follow-up questions, please feel free to send us an email at onlinewritingcenter.acu.edu to visit the Online Writing Center website or sign up for an appointment directly at my ACU. With that, have a good night.